Break It Table is brought to you by Nikki Hits Beauty Studio. Hello everybody, welcome to Freaky Table. Happy New Year 2022. This, we are back. This is an announcement officially, and I'm not here alone. I have Yana Junior and Kuo Elunge. And we are here and we are saying thank you very much for being patient. Thank you very much for the support. Thanks for the love. We appreciate you, we love you right back, all right? That being said, and speaking about love, we have a gift from a fan all the way from Wimbo. Um, this is by Bomako Homes, and uh, this was sent all the way from the United States. So thank you very much. Uh, we, we, we really appreciate the fan love. This is a, a portrait of all of us, the hosts, and then uh, the Freaky Table logo. Thank you so much. I think we are going to find some way to put it in, in, in the studio. <laughs> all right, so the guys are here. Everybody's looking fly. We're back as usual. Koi Longe, Happy New Year. Yana, Happy New Year, all gray. I don't know whether your hair is looking all gray, but you look good. Super linings. <laughs> you look good. Thank you. Elonga is ready to go. Ah, uh, see you. All diplomatic, professional. I don't know what's going on. I'm very focused on you, <laughs> young man. Focused on him now. Okay. All right. So, Happy New Year, guys. January had been very, very, very busy with the African Nations Cup. Congratulations to Cameroon. You guys hosted, I think Africa has never seen this kind of African Nations Cup organization before. And this was really, really spectacular. Thanks to all the comments on Twitter. That's what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> congratulations also to Team Senegal. They are the new African champion in football. So Mane and his entire squad, congratulations. And wow, what a celebration from Senegal. It was massive in Dakar. So we wish we were there, but well, we watched it on television and social media. That was okay by us. Um, also, congratulations go to Egypt for becoming second in... in <laughs> I like their cheers. It was so nice to see. I was there in the stadium live. Oh, yeah. Mm. The moment they scored the goal, the fans started belting out. Is it, how, what, 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 if I do a run out of the stadium, that's the word. Oh my God. Just like we were running out of the stadium when they were booking nice. a fast all nice see. It was, it was so nice to see. It was great. What an AFCON experience. Please share your AFCON experience with us. We'd really like to know and how you've overcome the, the defeat from Egypt, especially those in Cameroon. <laughs> and uh, well, for Nigerians, I don't know. Um, we are very sorry that the Super, Eagles, the Super Eagles had to bow out in the early stages of the competition. Anyway, so we are back here. Now, AFCON is over. The big question now is what lies ahead for the future of Cameroon's football. We have a new president for the Cameroon Football Federation and it's none other than the legend himself, Samuel Eto Feast. And now everybody is asking what will Samuel Eto do for local football in Cameroon? So we're now here. Yeah. That brings us here. I know I don't play professional football. Clearly this guy doesn't play, he can't run. I used to play, I used to play just because I, no, even out of the, of the headache I had in Form 3, and I've been a pro now, pff, sadly. So, it happens, it happens. <laughs> okay, it, it's done too, we don't play football, yeah. but we support football anyway. Yeah. yeah. So now we have, we have Eto, um, Eto is now the head of affairs for, for Cameroon football. However, there is yeah. a minister for, for sports and physical education. Stop. In, in Cameroon, <laughs> Nassis Mwele, yeah. and um, it's and before we get into that, Eto, Eto has made it very very public right now that he is bent on reviving the Cameroon local football in Cameroon, yeah. building. There was one point in our early lives when um, football was everything. The regional footballs, the football games, we have the intercartiers. We also had even Brazil's Top Cup where, where uh, young boys were finding their ways into the future of football, into their future, to give their, their, their future some kind of light, even when there was no money. Now that there's money and Eto is the president of Faker Food, you think that Eto can do something with local football in Cameroon? Do I, do I, do I think? Uh, I know he can. Uh, does he have the ability or the capabilities? I think it. He, he does in, in very in very many, many ways, and I particularly followed his manifesto before he was elected president. He said a lot of things. He was saying the right things, but the question has always been: everybody can say the right things in, in, in the game of football, but can you do the right things? Mm -hmm. And it's from the actions he's taken, 
first of all, for really reworking um, player contracts, um, setting a minimum wage to 100,000 for professional league and 50,000 for the second division. Also restructuring the league from to 25 teams now, where you're going to play in two pools. Also um, doing things like trying to get more endorsed and more sponsorship money. Uh, I think MTN has, has, re has re endorsed the league. Um, there's also um, trying to work well, work better with with other um, other stakeholders like Guinness, who sponsors the Super League, the, the Guinness Super League, which is the, it's like the feminine professional league. Um, also trying to find ways in developing grassroots football, like getting deals with um, the locals in Chang and in Zimbabwe or somewhere in Yaoundé. So you see that this this is making. I, I don't think that guy has slept one minute since he became president. Yeah. Stress. Yeah, and and I'm, I'm, I, it's 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 particularly good because he's somebody who who has played football, he's like a grass to grass story, so he knows the struggles of the of the player right in Koke. Mm -hmm. He knows what it means to go to the top, and he understands that these are the, these are the various structures that you need to put in place for elite footballers to thrive. And he made something which which really caught my attention particularly is how much he understands the impact of the media in restructuring the football in restructuring football in Cameroon. He said he was going to put set aside a fund for to train journalists. To me, that 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 made me take him serious because everywhere in the world where football had, football is succeeding or has ambitions of succeeding, they've worked on their media. The Premier League, that, I think the media is the greatest exporter of the Premier League. The, in, 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 in South Africa, for example, Super Sports carries the weight of the PSL. In in Nigeria, because of this the affiliation with GSTV. It's exporting their league. So you see that he's, he's identified the right structures. First of all, catering to the product service, the players, making sure that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are satisfied with the job. Then looking at the, the, the factors that really make the structures live and thrive, the media, and also the infrastructure. And I think can, AFCON has been very timely, even though winning would have really been spectacular because mm -hmm. while the spirits are up, people are really finding their love for football. So yeah, it's not bad, but then it's, it's, I think it's for more of, of how you galvanize the population. I think the population are in the, are in the, are in the right place right mentally right now. It's just for how Feka Food now really takes us as, uses as a springboard. But I think everything is, is in the right place. It's looking, it's looking right. Yeah, it's looking right. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, you, spoke about, you spoke about looking right, the structures he's put, at least the things that he's done so far, uh, just months into his, his, pres his presidency. Yes. Yeah. Um, it is great. Uh, recently, he named his eight-man executive committee to yeah. work with him uh, in Fika Foot, and uh, which was really great. On, on, Maybe a little, you know, Barista Agbo Balau is also a human activist, uh, uh, pointed out yeah. that Eto lacked Anglophones in his team, yeah. in his eight-man uh, uh, executive committee. Yeah. And that could cause a little bit of problem because he was, he was very, he said, you know, it's the entire Cameroon mm -hmm. that is being run by Fika Foot. And the entire Cameroon loves it or supported him when he was a footballer. Mm -hmm. And actually, at least 85% of Cameroon wanted him to be fake or were happy that he was fake food president how come when he named uh an in-man committee there were no anglophones in it however there is a facebook post that says that henry jarak the late yeah, henry jarakwan's son is part of the committee but the na his name was not part of the names that were sent out by fake food so it, it left everybody was like okay did they just add him after they criticized him or something hey <laughs> longer where do you stand on this one um First of all, I should say that the, the very idea of having Ito at the helm of um, the football um, body, governing body, is in itself um, really good for the image of Cameroonian yeah. football and for the morale of football in Cameroon generally. Um, because this is, they say, now person job fit. Like, this is the right person for the job. Who else will be there? We've never had a much more qualified candidate for that position. I, that I can I can bet on that we've not had, and you can see that this is some this is his element with the type of sweeping and timely changes that um, he's making. All of these I think that are driving towards reworking the image of Fika Food because we know that the image of Fika Food has suffered over the years. You know, so Fika Food has been, been several times on the standardization committee of um, FIFA mm -hmm. in the backdrop of corruption. So, I mean, you see the things he's doing. In fact, you know he's doing that job without earning a salary. His salary is being used to develop amateur football. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that that's the right person. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he really has too much money, but that's the right person. Um, but to, to your point, I think that is a perennial problem in Cameroon. That, and I was thinking differently. I, I'm not the type of person who thinks that, oh, um, you should have Anglophones because you should just have Anglophones mm-hmm. there. Um, you, should, you should have people who are qualified um, there. So, yeah. But, but the fact is you fall within Cameroon. And we do know the divisions, the deep seated divisions that are in the country. And that um, you can always find Francophone candidates who can all be qualified for any position. Just for the image of unity, it will run also on the platform of being a unifier. Mm-hmm. And so his board, his, his decision should also not just unify, but be something that the country sees like, I am represented, I am heard. You know, I feel like when people are not represented, their interests are never met. And there might be specific things that are, doing football is a universal thing, there are things which might be specific to Anglophones within the football yeah. um, um, body, which might not be addressed because of the lack of representation. So let me just add, because I know you have to continue, let me just add to something that you're saying. Um, you know, he's, I think um, 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 Barista Agbobala was coming, there, there, there's something else I think that maybe you could not say it mm-hmm. really. Uh, remember Obama, the guy from, mm-hmm. from Vision Card, mm-hmm. who Anglophone. said the trash that he said about Anglophones, if left for him, they should just kill everybody mm-hmm. during the Anglophone crisis. Mm-hmm. And so when, when, and he's part of it, was team yeah. Yeah. as an advisor and stuff like that. So I think where uh, Bala was coming from is like, if you have those kind of people around us, then you don't have our interest at heart. So mm-hmm. we, we, you can't work with us. Yeah. So, I, 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 I know, I mean, it has been working with, with um, Obama, I think, throughout his campaign. Throughout his campaign. Yes. They say it's one of the reasons why he even won. Yeah, throughout his campaign. Allegedly. <laughs> Which is really sad. <laughs> if that, it's really sad if that's one of the reasons. I don't think that... It's not. Sure. It's not <laughs> one of the reasons. <laughs> because Obama is, is not even popular among Francophones. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, it's and, and, not, and, and it's not it, it, it himself won yeah. it. Just it to himself won the idea. I mean, yeah. nobody was thinking of Obama when he exactly. was it. Like, if anybody was thinking of that, he wouldn't have won. So nobody was thinking of that. I just feel that um, for, for the image of the institution, representation is important. But also that when you have people like Obama there, anything that, um, anything that, every time an Anglophone doesn't have a voice, you can make a direct correlation between the presence of that type of um, hate, full person with the type of decisions. I think that um, when I look at his social media feeds, mm-hmm. that he really loves Anglophones. That he really wants to give the image of... I am with you um, guys. Yes, yeah. because it's all English. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. all Even English. though I think that was that it's strategic. Not, it's strategic, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but then that's politics. Yeah, like, that's it, yeah. At least people should feel mm-hmm. that, that, okay, this person is talking to you. You know, yeah, he's speaking our language. I thought when he came for their meeting in, in Limbe, and, man, see, see, we just need young people to be leaders. That's right. You know, you're like, how far, bro? Yeah. Like, that's how he was, he was greeting the people. You know, mm-hmm. tell, and he was, he was, it was really nice to see the levity. Yeah. Um, but it's also nice to see the policies that he's putting through. Yeah. Um, I think that with leadership, these criticisms will come. I also feel he's somebody who will listen. Mm-hmm. That he will listen and he will make the right decision. Even, even talk about right decision. I think that, that was, that has always been one of my fears anyway. Like, this is just me observing how it was carried out business because before he was going for president, for president of Eka Food, um, okay. Look at his, his launched, um, Set Mobile, which, which failed terribly. He launched, um, Beto. And then also, you see that this is somebody who has an interest in investing in the country. But then it's always been, the question has always been, who does he really recruit to execute this, 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 these brilliant ideas, these investments, they've always, they've always gone down the drain. And uh, it, this was a personal fear, which I think I, I made, I made known to some of my guys and even on Twitter that he could, he could really come in with the right intentions, but those he brings around him could really ruin them because I, he always seems like an innocent who he's going to trust you with, with, with the fact that you look, you're, you're competent enough or the idea that you're competent. And then when he entrusts you with, 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 with executing this, 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 um, um, responsibilities, You've spectacularly let him down. And if it's someone like Obama in his team, I'm not saying that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, 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 a matter to judge him. I'm just saying that that's, that's the worry I have. But so far, he's, he's really implemented all what he says he's going to implement, at least at, so far at this stage. But then that, that worry, that worry is still there about who really executes because he cannot be everywhere. 
now he's everywhere because he's at the, he's the early stages. He has to be present. He has to, but when he, when the league kicks off and maybe they have to play games in, in different towns and then also probably it's, 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 uh, it's a game where they have to give match bonus and, and, and he doesn't fall through. Yeah. He doesn't follow up all of that. And, and also just sticking with the whole Anglophone, Francophone thing, uh, he also made, he made, um, public that he was, his at, uh, uh, wanting, pleading for the government to build a national a stadium in Chang. And we know that Chang is in the western region. West already has a stadium. Yeah. Meanwhile, Northwest doesn't have a stadium. And so the people from the Northwest are like, come on, man. At least Southwest has, because we have one in Limbe. The major cities have, but Menda doesn't have uh, a national stadium. So uh, it will never mention anything about that one. <laughs> so, and then now talking about this whole Obama and then Barista Bala making those statements, everybody was like, come on. I think, um, I think if, you, if you go by his manifesto, he says um, he wants, he envisages that um, we should have 40 um, stadium by 2030. And yeah, it was not always that he can kickstart the process. Yeah, very, very much. Yeah. So, and I, 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 I would possibly imagine that among the 40 um, stadiums that Northwest, Northwest we definitely have. Um, he also talked about um, training centers. He himself was a training center in Akaji. So, yes, I think that he can. My issue is this. You know, let's not be oblivious to the fact that there's a crisis in Exactly. Me. And it will be foolhardy to go now and start building yeah, I'm saying they can do it, but if if if, if, if roads, construction roads are being disrupted and construction work on roads are being dis disrupted, who goes again and start building a, a, a stadium there? Uh, that is why it is important that why he does not have a mandate to solve the anglophone crisis, that there is more more push that solutions come for that these type of developmental projects can can come to pass because trust me he will be unable to do anything for the um, english-speaking regions if this problem continues yeah he totally totally wouldn't oh, so we just stay in the garden so he'll be attending he'll just come with organize his meeting and maxings and eating soya <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's okay that's yeah and the, 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 the thing is the thing is when, when you look at how he's going about it right you see that he is, I don't want to say for the back door, <laughs> try to the point about, because you know football is always united Cameroonians, and regimes are always used football as a unifying factor. He likes to push an agenda or to kill a crisis. I mean, DJ Drogba stood on stage and ended the, 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 the civil war in Côte d'Ivoire, the war in Côte d'Ivoire, you know, not really ended, but anyway, mitigated it. <laughs> I, I know them. <laughs> because, no, I'm saying that he he was a good image for it, but no, 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 wait, no, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, when, when we say that it, internationally, you're always giving credit for it, but let's, I mean, the way, the way it's painted as he ended it, right? Mm -hmm. But it was his voice that, that made a lot of the rebels to, to lay, lay their arms, and it's in some way. I just think that's a very simplistic thing to say. <laughs> in, so, in some ways, in some ways. But anyway, the point I'm making is, is, is how much He's going, he's going to have to use football to unite Cameroonians because in 2017, we saw how much the, the, the government used the African, um, us winning the African Cup of Nations to really galvanize people. That's the peak of the, of, of the, of the war in, in southern Cameroons. And also, I think that's also one of their hopes this year. We win, use as a launching pad to say, you know what, we are one and everything. But then it did not happen, right? And I think that, that can also be the same thing that, that, that he, or I think the same thing he wants to use right now. I think, sorry, let me just say something in, uh, uh, to what you were saying. I actually think that, first of all, the presence of the truth is very unified. Yeah. Beyond the football, the very idea of two being there, and it, it will just come to your two, not come. No, no, just fine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it is good. But the second thing um, is that I actually think that this was the unifier, the football competition. Yeah. yeah. The Afcon, that it was the unifier. That we left, even though third position, we left the sense of nationhood, with the sense of unity. With, I mean, I, I, I was so proud, you know, I, I was so proud. Before that, I wasn't. And I'm so proud. I was so happy. I mean, so I feel like, um, to your point about it being a unifier, that is it. But I don't think that losing, because this was really not losing. The performance of, of the 
of Wait, the like the losing the trophy, yes. not getting the trophy. Yes. Yes. But I don't think that Cameroonians came up with a sense like we are losers. Like that yeah, yeah. It was the comeback was that comeback iconic. Comes. That's the best thing that's ever happened since that time. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, it, it it was really good. And I I think that it could be used more. It was probably the most popular person this country has. Yes, so in Africa yeah. too. And just speaking about it, oh, from one um, former footballer, the Indomitian Wulan, <laughs> to another, um, recently there are rumors and perhaps reports that the new coach for the Indomitable Lions is none other than the former captain of the Indomitable Lions, Rigobert Song Bahanak. Now it's still, whether it's true or not, because they say Wednesday the 20 seat or 20 something, we are going to, it's going to be announced. We are waiting. Um, the 23rd, yeah. Wednesday. Um, so we are waiting. If, if at all it's true, uh, is that good for Cameroon right now? Because we have qualifying games coming up for the World Cup qualifiers and then a, a nation's cup or an African Nations Cup in a couple of months. Uh, is that a good thing to switch your coach no. right now? I don't think that the question is whether Antonio has been doing a bad job. That, that will require a change. A change. No. Yeah, he's not really done a bad job. He's made a few blunders, um, particularly the match with Burkina Faso. I think that was one of yeah, the biggest blunders that he did. But throughout the competition, he was he was on even, point. Even, supreme, even previewing to the competition, yes. you see that he was doing a great job. So I don't, I I don't think that um, 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 Rigobert will be a bad coach. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a matter of the time. Right. Yeah, I think that quite frankly, it would be, it would be nice to see a Cameroonian again coach the Cameroonian. Yeah. Um, it would be nice to see, especially the work to build on the work Antonio has done. Yeah. It would be nice to see. I just, I'm just a little worried about the time. Yeah, and that's where that's where the minister of sports stands because he's just, maybe no, a bit he's, a bit worried. His point was that <laughs> his point was that we've never really won an yeah, international competition. We, yeah, yeah, but but then that's that's not a good sign. How many local coaches have we had first? And we have won. We have uh, won the Olympics now. The, yeah, the, the Olympics. We've won with it. But then again, it speaks a lot about his mindset for the white man. You understand? No, but look, I, 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 I think, I think to me, it's, it's more of a, of a, of a, of a structural issue. How? Because international football is different from club football. You can change, you can change your coaches knowing that, okay, you can easily pick profiles here and there to fit the national, the, the, the club side. With national team, you have a set of players which, you have you, you cannot you cannot do otherwise. So you need a, a foundational footballing system or philosophy that can that, that can bring these players who play in different clubs in different countries in different systems and have different profiles together, right? Under one umbrella. And this is where nas the nas in fact, cup competitions, especially nas on the national um, national level, is different. International level is different because you having um, someone like the, the, the present coach right now. In terms of what he's done, I think he's done a fantastic job. He's, he's, he has a system, a clear system. You know that, okay, you, ha you have expectations of the, of, the, of the team. You know how they are going to play, how they, how they are going to respond to pressure, how they are going to counter, maybe counter attack or whatever they're going to do. You know, you, you know what's going to happen. But the issue with Rigo Besson is not, not that he may not be a good coach, but that looking at his track record with the under-23s and also managing, managing the national team in 2014, he hasn't really had success, right? And we under 23, I understand that he himself complained that you cannot just bring players overnight and expect them to perform. So he said it's also a foundational issue. But my issue is if, they, if, if we so badly want a Cameroonian there, which is good in terms of building our own football philosophy, right? Where these players from under 23s, under 17s, and under 19s will come to a particular system. Fine. But the compromise is get the person you want to be there into the national team and he becomes, um, he, he becomes like he shadows the person who is there right now because you're sure that this philosophy works already because you're also sure that the structures which he's going to lay right comes from the grounded philosophy i don't know what rigobe song's philosophy is going to look like if you look at each minute how the alternatives performed mm -hmm. you, you, you need, they need to score many goals they, they need to they need to concede so many goals you're not sure exactly what the, what the strength is mm -hmm. but with this coach you're sure that you're going to score goals mm -hmm. you're not going to concede many you understand and the thing is, he has really marked our profiles. You're sure that we're going to play with three at the back, a ball playing center back. You're going to play with an aggressive center back. You're going to, play, you're going to play with two sprinters on the flanks. You're going to play with, with two strikers who are going to get you goals or create goals. The only issue I found where it's lacking is I think he's working towards 
and his, his position he has always tinkered with throughout the competition is a creative midfielder, like mm -hmm. the 10. Either playing with um, um, Chupo Moting, taking him out or bringing in Clinton, just someone who can, who can create. That's the profile we lack. But in terms of profile, we have a profile in the national team. But the, the issue also is how this, how uh, the, the youth system is affected by the national team. Do we restructure the youth system where we know that, okay, the national team is going to play three at the back. So we know that we are grooming players to just fit this system. The song has that, has, the, I don't, I doubt what that song has that kind of mindset. You want song to start with it with under 23. At least you should move from here, progress he's into the national system. team. That's oh, what you're saying. He's on, he's, oh, he's shadowing the coach right now. So I know that in three years, when the coach is moving on, there's a system. Song just built on that. Because in terms of coach badges, I don't know where Song exactly got his training from. I mean, but, but, but uh, Zidane came into the coaching. Is that exactly what, that, that's the point I'm, I'm, I'm driving towards because Real Madrid knew that the long term vision is for Zidane, probably Zidane to become some, maybe um, in some capacity, lead Real Madrid, maybe administratively or sporting wise in terms of coaching. So they got him under um, Ancelotti. He was shadowing on Ancelotti for a while, even doing games. Ancelotti let him take, take, um, you know, um, take charge of games by talking, because by talking, you're experiencing the games itself. But then now we are setting high. People, we, we, we perform well during, uh, Cameroon has performed well during the African, African Cup of Nations, right? So you have, when was the last time you could name three players in the national team? But now because of the consistency in the, in the, in, in the way we play and the, the profiles, we have that. So Trump will come in now with a different philosophy. Why to pick his own players? I, like Elonga said, the timing is not good because we are going to, Cameroon is going to play for the, he's going to try to qualify for the World Cup. You're going to disrupt yeah. everything. So you're going to want to play maybe four at the back, and then you would have see it's going to it's going to cause a lot of disruption. And I think right now it would be the most stupid decision to make to yeah. put in song right now. Rather, there's a shortcut to this: get him to work with um, um, can't, um with Antonio. Antonio, shadows Antonio for three years. You know, in three years, there's a youth system that is working towards him. You know, becoming coach, so that you know that I'm not saying the familiarity with these players. One of the one of the successes of the 2000 and 2002 team is that they were either from the Brazzaville or Kaji Academy, so they knew themselves either by play, facing, each, facing each other or playing the same academy. And also, it's the same thing with, the, with, with look at every footballing system. Let's even go to Spain, where the system was either borrowed from Barcelona or Real Madrid. The most profiles were from those teams. So you're coming to national team, you're not coming to create new ideas, you're coming to a system that picks on profiles, which we are going to go with. If you look, most national teams in the world, they work on profiles, not necessarily a football system as, as such. But the system now is where you create those profiles. What is comfortable for these players to, to, to play in? So I think that if we are going with some right now, we'll be, footballing wise, it will be stupid. So Patriotic wise, uh, hey, it will be nice. But are we, is, is, are, we, are we going for patriotism right now or for a long term winning system? So I think we should really, Cameroon National Team should really maintain this guy. The way, the way Longa is it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Is there something no, else you want to add? But I think we should just skip that a little bit because we are running, uh, running out of time. But um, there is. Also, the issue of Coco Emilia, who was made the head of bloggers and online um, influencers yeah. for the AFCON. Do you think that she did a great job? Because we got hit uh, a couple of times on social media, and it was just basically Cameroonians defending the flag. I don't think she did a lot of I don't work. think that she, she needed to do much. Yeah. Um, Cameroonians were on their really? best, on their best, <laughs> best behavior. Quite frankly, as, as, as a former troll, I really enjoyed. <laughs> you see this guy? Take it, take it only. Shit, only shit, yeah, no, I really enjoyed. Um, I, this was perhaps the most interesting Afcon yeah. when it comes to social media engagement too. Oh, you should read the cafe. It, it was it was something else, and with all the all the the concerns about COVID, about about that, it turned out to be fantastic. The level of engagement, mm -hmm. countries going after countries with banter and all of that. I I, I don't think she had. So much to do because we're all ready. I mean, even even Rebecca Enoncho was there. I mean, yeah, I mean. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we're on active spaces now. Sometimes on, I mean, on, on Twitter spaces, having discussions on on the after. And I've never seen Cameroonians this active. Like we've we've, we've 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 won, we've won, we've won beyond just organizing. Yeah. The level of support. And fan participation. Fan participation. I mean, it was from A to two. Yeah, all that. <laughs> That's what I was talking about, about. And the president. Oh. And the president. <laughs> I, I was watching the finals. I was watching the finals at Olembe. The, this guy, it came on screen and the crowd. I nearly, I nearly lost my, 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 my hearing. Even the president. Yes, Elonga, even the president. <laughs> No, seriously, wait, am, I, am I just the only one? Or you saw a lot of no, support for the president? He was there for us. He was there for us. But, 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 but you, you know, you know what, you know what I really like about, about what this brought up, brought out in Cameroon as beyond, beyond, beyond galvanizing them towards one cause, I guess external threat is how much it, it really shone light on the creatives. 
the photographers. Yes. The, 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 the Instagram creators. No, there was this photographer. We need to give a shout out. Is it Taximan? Taximan photographer. Shout out to you, man. Your pictures were insane. I mean, he's the one that took that famous Olympic Stadium with the scales and stuff like it was a famous yeah, picture with the sun setting. DJ Lefan did a brilliant job. It was provided by Tech Cabal, yeah. the, the, the Nigerian um, tech um, 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 magazine. The thing is, what, what, what beyond that is, is how much potential football can, 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 can launch mm -hmm. for other industries. Tourism, fashion, uh, 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 food tourism itself, travel. But we need to build Cameroon government needs to feed the road networks because that, that I think that's one of the reasons that really killed the attendance on the early stages. The, how do you transit from one town to the other? How do you live? You know, in terms of, for example, how do you if I'm if I'm going to watch a match in Bafosan, where do you stay? If it's not expensive. Hotel. Well, I think I think that's the reason why I mean we'll have someone like Eto today yeah, <laughs> to help. Right and his executives, please yeah. listen to our cries. Yeah. yeah. Build more that. hotels, fix the roads, you know, more basic facilities. Me the ticket one thousand. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> but you know, we have we have so many things to talk about. Shout out to all the artists, Daphne, Stanley Enno, and uh, Salatiel and the son for uh, Manu Dibango, uh, who did a brilliant job at the closing and the Joe Salima um, artist. Um fan <laughs> great great closing, great opening. It was really, really a great AFCON. At the end of the day, we have one question to ask you guys. Do you think that we go back some will make it good? Uh, coach for the Indomitable Lions right now. If whatever you think, please drop your comments in the comment section right there below. All right. It's been Yana, Kaur, and myself, Joan. See you guys another time. And please follow us on all social media platforms at Freaky Table. We love you all. Bye bye. Freaky Table is brought to you by Nikki Hits Beauty Studio. Thanks for watching the dopest TV show right now. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can see our beautiful faces. Scratch that. Our handsome faces. No, my handsome face. My, I'm handsome. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. To never miss a thing, follow us on all social media platforms at Freaky Table. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So, yeah, stay tuned.